Navigating Transformation and Clarity. Welcome to your October 2023 monthly astrology forecast. So as the leaves change and the energy begins to shift as we head on into fall, we're in for a month of deep transformation, some insightful revelations, and some powerful shifts with the planetary movements. We're going to have a solar eclipse, a lunar eclipse that are going to emphasize themes of balance and material well-being. They're going to be urging us to release what's holding us back and embrace this transformative growth as we move forward. Mercury and the sun are both going to be in Scorpio, encouraging us to dive deep with our emotions and our thoughts, while Venus in Virgo is going to emphasize practical expressions of love. This month is an invitation to embrace the change, to reflect on your relationships and your values, to embark on a journey of inner exploration. Be open to transformation as the universal energies are here to guide us towards uh, greater clarity and more authenticity. Uh, to work to stay adaptable, to be open-minded as you navigate the planetary currents of October. My hope is that having this forecast available ahead of time is going to give you the areas of your life that are going to be most affected and impacted and have this opportunity to flow and to work with the changes that are occurring in your life. Remember that eclipses, they bring such dramatic shifts and that there's not an opportunity to go back. They eclipse people, places, and things into our life and out of our life. And so there is no opportunity to go back and it can sometimes be jarring and confusing. So at this time, my hope is that um, you will see this as an opportunity that this eclipse, the eclipses and the eclipse season, they're meant for growth. My hope is that the astrological insights that you gain will empower you to make the most of this transformative month. So stay tuned to the energies and um, stay in tune to them and continue to seek alignment with your higher self. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you're a regular follower, thank you for your support, your thumbs up, your shares, your comments. I invite all of you to join me for my lives on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I'm going to have uh, one time a month for the new moon and uh, another time of the month for the full moon. And in between, I'm going to be offering tarot consultations. I also encourage you to sign up for my email where I share the latest happenings with links to find everything. And and if you're ready for an in-depth reading of your chart, you can schedule a personalized astrological reading at my website, willowgracemystic.com. So welcome, I'm your astrologer, Patricia Tate, and this is your October forecast. So for Gemini Sun and Gemini Rising, your October, I wanna draw attention to the Aries part of your chart, which is your 11th house of your personal hopes, wishes, dreams, and who do you connect up with in order to manifest those and make those happen. And it's opposite your fifth house. The fifth house is the house of what brings joy to you. It's children being childlike. It's the house of affairs and gambling and art and music and creativity. And so those two areas are highlighted and are going to be highlighted for the next 18 months. But as we go through the month of October, I want you to see and hear how the planets um, shift and change things slowly in those areas of your life. So on October 8th, so I'm going to move the calendar forward. So on October 8th, we have um, Venus enter the sign of Virgo. Venus is in the third house. The third house is the house of communication. It's the, com the house of travel. Are you communicating what your values are? Are you explaining, um, uh, are you sharing with your neighbors, your siblings, things that are going on with you? Um, so the month is going to begin with Venus here and Venus being the planet of love and harmony in the sign of Virgo. So on October 8th, Venus is now going to enter the sign of Virgo, which is your fourth house of home, family, roots, foundation. It's literally your home. And in the sign of Virgo, Virgo is practical. It's detail oriented. It's about making lists. And so the month is gonna begin with Venus, the planet of love and harmony, 
in your home sector with pragmatic Virgo, meaning um, let's structure, let's get details. So think about relationships and aesthetics, taking on more of a practical tone. It's going to be a time where you're going to show your love through acts of service and uh, appreciate the beauty in simplicity, making things, creating things for people that you love or creating a home environment that makes you feel loved and safe and secure. At this time, I'm going to encourage you to also focus on self-care. Uh, Virgo is the sign of needing to take care of self and donating of time to others. It's about acts of service. So focus on your own self-care, focus attention to details. Everything that is matters of the heart will be important to you at this time. And this is leading up to what brings you your joy and your hopes, wishes, and dreams, your goals of your 11th and fifth house. Now, as we move forward to the 14th, so on October 14th, we're going to have we now have uh, the sun, the moon, the south node, and Mercury all in your fifth house. So this is going to be a potent solar eclipse new moon. New moons begin things, start, fresh start, clean slate. Uh, and it's in the sign of Libra. Libra is balanced or needing balance. Libra is negotiating. Libra is also, I think of as the ox where there's a yoke attached to you and somebody else. So whatever it is that you do, they have to do. Whatever it is they do, you have to do. And so it's this being tied to things. And so this this eclipse is going to bring this beautiful fresh start to partnerships and balance in your life. It's going to be an opportunity to uh, leave behind some old relationships. These Maybe these are children that are moving out of your house. Maybe you are completing projects. Maybe uh, the affair has um, gone its separate way. But it's about creating harmonious connections. It's about starting and setting these new intentions about equitable collaborations and seeking inner equilibrium, not just on the outside. This is going to be a really potent solar eclipse because it's the first one to occur in the sign of Libra since uh, 2016. It's going to supercharge the six month window that's going to refresh and rewire these relationships and this, this creative area of your life, the people that you are networking with, the people that you are taking your skills or or um, children or being childlike. Remember, this is sports, it's music, it's could, so you need to be thinking, could some part of your work benefit from a collaborator who complements your skill set? Now, we, we have the moon and we have the planet Mercury. Mercury is thoughts, ideas, communication, and it rules your chart. You are a Gemini. And so with it ruling your chart, it's about you writing down all the qualities and the capabilities of the person that you would like to attract. Now, this moon also opposes Chiron. Um, so Chiron, Chiron is the wounded healer. This is about everybody having a wound, but drawing those people in or wanting to help fix them this is you focusing on yourself. Be mindful of the type of people that you draw in at an eclipse that remember that you are here for self-care, self, -care, self um, taking care of yourself. And um, some people get upset with that and they say, well, we should help and take care of others. There's a point of taking care of others and enabling. And if someone can do something themselves, you're enabling. And so think of it that way as, you have to have self-care. We appreciate it more. We value it more. We can stand on our own two feet uh, with more confidence. Now the lunar nodes, the north node in your uh, 11th house and your south node is in your fifth house. The lunar nodes are pointing to the areas of your life where you are asked to find new direction, um, something through rebalancing of your priorities. You are being asked to find um, a redirection of what are your hopes, what are your dreams, what are, what are your wishes, what are your goals, reformatting them and saying, I have to focus on my stuff and not always follow along with you know, helping them complete theirs. That's fine and dandy as long as you both have the same goal set. Um, the 11th house is also the house of, of, of 
connections that you make that support you on this growth. And so you're going to be rebalancing some of your priorities. Now that the nodes have moved into the sign of identity, Aries, identi identifying what you need in order to move forward, and Libra, how do you balance things that you want to do and people in your life, the children, uh, things, creative projects that you want to do. Now that the nodes have moved into this, how do you balance who you are as an individual and in your relationships and in the social networks that you participate for work and for pleasure? With the South Node in Libra, there could be some long-term partnerships or alliances that may come to a natural end. They will be eclipsed out and new will be eclipsed in. That's what hap happens with eclipses. Eclipses are sudden, hard, fast, and there is no opportunity to go back. And so the North Node in Aries is asking you to find your unique voice and your motivations. Set the boundaries about what do you want to do to move forward with your desires and fight for your individual goals and find new ways to express yourself. And because of the planet Uranus's location, so I want to bring in now Uranus. Uranus is the planet of shock, surprise. I didn't see that coming. I didn't, you know, like I didn't think about it. It's uniqueness. It's where we have this great inspiration of, of, and it's in your 12th house. It's dreams, it's uh, intuition, it's spirit guides, it's the Akashic records, it's where you go for um, to be alone, to gather your thoughts. It's the house of isolation. So because of Uranus's location there, this eclipse is inviting you to restructure your relationships so that you can find more uh, equality as you move forward. Inclusiveness, and you're going to want to find respect for each other's differences. This is you going within, taking time out and saying, how do I balance this? Who do I balance this with? How do I find my voice, speak up for what I want and what I need and still be unique to me? It's not about changing you. This is about you aligning with who you really are. And so then I want to talk about Mercury and Scorpio. So Mercury, follow him um, Mercury is now going to end up in the sign of Scorpio. As Mercury goes there, let me circle him for you. As Mercury enters this house of, it's your sixth house of your daily service. It's, it's your habits. It's what you do, your mental, physical, your health, your well-being. It's where we go to find support from others as in mentorship. It's also the house of pets. And so as Mercury, the planet of communication, moves into this, this is about you using your intellect, your thoughts, your ideas, in the intense sign of Scorpio. Scorpio wants to get to the bottom of everything. It's like the psychic detective of the Zodiac. And so it's encouraging you at this time, um, you need to have some deep thinking, some probing conversations. This could be with doctors. This could be with healthcare workers. Uh, remember that this is the house of where you take care of yourself, your mind, your body, your spirit, and your um, where you have these daily habits of how do I assist and help others. It's you diving into the depths of your thoughts and your the way that you communicate with authenticity. It's you uncovering truths, but being cautious of these power struggles in discussions that you have with coworkers and that you could have with mentors. Remember that Scorpio is, uh, I think of this when, when Mercury goes into Scorpio and we have Mars there, this is um, like a snake and you're, go you're growing and evolving. And as time goes by, you're gonna be shedding your skin, transforming and evolving. And that's what's gonna happen because next we have the sun on the 23rd, come and join. Now, when the sun comes here, the sun literally represents you. It's the energy is just intensifying and it's it's moving forward with uh, passion and desire of embracing personal growth. It's embracing this rebirth part of your life and it's going to be shedding these old layers. So you are the snake that's growing and evolving in 
I want to volunteer, but I have to take care of myself first. I want to do that for work, but I have to find a balance. And so how are you using your words, being authentic to yourself and not working so much or volunteering so much that you just give everything away and you're so depleted? Your Aries North Node is saying you have to focus on your personal hopes, wishes, dreams, goals, and shedding your skin to evolve into um where else can you apply this knowledge? Where else can you volunteer to get information? Or or this could also be the house of where do I find a mentor that will support me with where I'm going? Maybe old mentorship is no longer uh, useful or available. Maybe you've outgrown them and now it's time to move on. Next, we have um, a lunar eclipse on the 28th. I love this. So I want to draw your attention to this in that we have the moon in the sign of Taurus conjunct Jupiter in your 12th house and the north node, the eclipse part is in the sign of Aries in your 11th house. So it's kind of like bridging this area of your life. So this month is going to conclude with this eclipse in the solid, stable, reliable um, sign of of Taurus, your 12th house, of your dreams, your intuition, and it's going to illuminate what are your values, what are your finances, what what do you need for um, financial security, what do you need for emotional security, what do you need to feel, um, this is what do you need to feel safe and secure and who do you need to surround yourself with? This is going to be a time that you're going to assess your relationship with money, possessions, self-worth, people, and you're going to be releasing any attachments that you have to outdated beliefs and to embrace this more grounded sense of abundance. The 12th house is where we release karma. We release things that have been handed down from generation to generation and we like break the chain and move on. And so you're going to be given this opportunity to break this chain for once and for all. This is the third and final lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus that represents your money, your security, your hard work. And this eclipse series, it began um, for you in November 19th, uh, 2021. So I want you to think back to that time period because that's when you started going within and saying, wow, this has been going on for generation to generation to generation, and uh, I, I need to stop this. Like, this needs to happen. This is uh, revamping not only the economy on that at that time, but this was revamping your personal financial habits for the last two years and to get rid of baggage that you've been carrying with you. Remember that Taurus is sensual but sensible, and Taurus loves luxury, and it wants security. And so it's ruled by the planet uh, Venus, which is the goddess of I, you know, luxury items. And so the key is to make sure that you have enough resources. And so what are those resources? Are they tuning into your intuition, tuning into your dreams? Are they surrounding yourself with people that are like-minded? It's about, um, covering all the bases while enjoying the things in your life that you consider earthy delights. Now, Taurus is also conjunct Jupiter in your 12th house. This uh, Jupiter is also opposite of Mars. And so during this eclipse, you're going to be asked to revisit what are your approach what is your approach to resources? Uh, you taking charge of your financial future, you taking charge of, of ownership of where you have just given away your time, your effort, your energy, and to the detriment of your health. Um, this opposition is, I need to grow. This is what opposes me. This is what's opposite of, and I have to take ownership of it and not blame anybody else. This is going to be a major release and it's going to be an ending of this because now you're going to be able to focus on these areas of Aries, yourself, your values, and the Libra sector of partnership and um, joy and pleasure and 
revisiting what is your approach to these resources? What is your approach to these partnerships? Uh, where do you need boundaries that are healthy? Where do you need contracts, um, legal matters that are good for you and that you are, it's, this is about you paying attention to everything that you do and not let somebody else have control over uh, what you're doing in your life. Not just going with the flow, like take an active role about your personal future. All right, so I hope that you have found this video resource to be helpful and to guide you on this transformative time in your life. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below.